Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today, the developers have released another exciting patch. But I'm always saying it's an exciting patch, but this one really takes the cake. Now, if we go into our inventory, we can actually see what is going on. So the first thing is we've got some new operational features. We also have large ship rocket launchers now work. Gatlin turrets now lock on automatically to targets, as well as the interior turrets. We're also greeted with two new blocks, the decoy block and the three new wheel types. Now the decoy block basically works as a target device until factions are put in for the actual Gatlin turrets and we have wheels that are a much more smoother alternative than to what we used to have to use. That was these where we had to make our own sort of wheel block. Now, these are absolutely amazing. So we've got them in the background here. This is for them on the large ship, and we've got them for the small ship here. So we have a small, medium, and large block. Now, we can also build on these like so. You can actually build on the front of them, so you could even make yourself some sort of interesting sort of nose cone design and maybe use it for extra armor. You could put some wheels on the side of the ship, maybe, if you're prone to ramming by mistake. Now, let's actually compare the old to new wheels. So we'll get in the old one first. And we'll power it up by turning the rotors on. Now, there was nothing really that wrong with these, but they just weren't too efficient. They just they weren't fast enough to want to use them for transport around your base. And if we just crank up the speed, for instance, take that up to that, take that up to max, take that up to max, and take that up to max. I mean, they're just not efficient. The, the wheels are spinning at a very high rate, but you're still getting a very slow speed. You can see that the speed's only just gone up to about 4.95, and their all-terrain capability is, is not very good at all. So let's just get rid of that thing. It's, it's just a sad sight. Now we've got these new wheel blocks. So if we head back over, we've got the ship with the new wheel blocks. Now these are extremely smooth, so I'm just going to turn it on. Get our rotors on. One there, one there, and one there. And now these are extremely smooth. These these really feel like turning wheels. I mean, they wouldn't even look like they're turning if they didn't have that little marker on, but they just turn so smoothly and so effectively. So let's crank up the speed. Uh, there, there, and there, and finally there. So now these just work so much more effectively, as well as climbing terrain as well. These are actually something you want to use to actually get around your base. I mean, you can actually climb up a small obstacle and go down the side of it rather than just falling off. Oh, it's just, it's just beautiful. It's absolutely great. Now, let's leave that to rock off the edge. There you go. Goodbye, car. And move on to something else. Now, these wheels give loads of different opportunities. So the next thing I'm going to show you is a little cable car. So I've ripped this out of my Black Mesa build. And I just wanted to show you how it works. So basically, we've got them on top, the wheels on top, and we're just going to turn them on, like so. And they basically drag us along like a monorail, so it's just very smooth, very easy, very simple design, a very good way of probably getting your workers around your station. And it's much cheaper than using thrusters, because the wheels and the motor blocks it seem to use a lot less power than the actual thrusters do in the long run. So there we go, we're just moving ourselves along, moving our workers along. Just a very nice alternative transport method. So we could also use this for plenty of other things like lifts, we can use it for X sort of shape frames. But let's get on to what you guys really want to talk about, or really want to see in this case. And now that is weapons. So these are the large ship weapons. So I'm just going to break into my ship here, like so. And I'm going to show you these. Now these have a much higher rate of fire than the normal rockets so if we go in here and we bring up a jeep and we bring them onto our toolbar you can actually just see the rate of fire of these it's pretty intense so i believe these over 19 missiles and the rate of fire makes them an absolute deadly choice to have on the side of your ship now let's move on to the automated turrets now if we stick one of these on the side you see it has gatling turrets we have both the interior turret and the gatling turret that are operational at the current moment in time we stick that on there it soon begins to activate and it basically scans its sector so what i've got here is if we build a new ship and we build on top of that is one of these decoy cubes we've actually got a mini target for it we can just throw some of these around and it tracks the target, It'll track it underneath and engage it to the best of its ability. These also engage the asteroids, but I'll show you that a little bit later on. So moving on to the target range, 
we have one in the range here. So what I've noticed that's quite exciting is that they engage the closest target first before they engage the second target. So if we throw one here, but one's going there, it'll engage that one and then engage that one. So that's very nice to know as well. So it'll target prioritize and normally the one that is closest to you is going to be the most dangerous. So moving on to the interior turret now. This has just got a little bit of a lower rate of fire, but it works in the exact same way. So it'll target prioritize and then engage all the targets until they're actually destroyed. And I think personally that looks extremely beautiful. Just the way it rotates, it feels so automated and so robotic. I mean, just walking into a room and seeing one of these guys and going, oh no, that would be extremely scary. Now we're going to do a little bit of a test. You're probably wondering if the larger rockets do more damage and what the differences are. So we'll get in the large turret. We'll fire one rocket at each target. I believe the only difference is in rate of fire, so we'll fire at the top ones. They'll be the, the large rockets turrets, so one rocket there. That was one layer of armor. This is two layers. And this is three layers once I've got it. It's a bit sensitive, this turret. And there's three layers of armor. So we've only penetrated one and a half by the looks of it. And let's try the same with the small rocket. So we've got 19 rockets in the other one, and we've got four rockets in this one. So we'll see if it really is that much of a difference. So this is three layers of armor. Looks exactly the same. Two layers. Exactly the same. And one layer should be penetration. So yeah, so the rockets basically do the exact same damage. I believe they're also the same rockets you actually load into each one of them. You just need to load more into the heavy rocket pod. So that really compares them to. Now, moving on finally. Now, there's a lot of different things you can do with this new patch, and I bet you just can't wait to get out of there, try all the different possibilities out, and my myself are really excited. I mean, combining some of the things, like building a turret, or building a little rover with a turret on the back and having some sort of death race. I mean, it's just so exciting to see some of these features, and just once more time now. I'm going to have to keep doing this. I just keep throwing targets out of them to watch them lock on engage. Absolutely beautiful. So thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.